ഓം ജ്ഞാനതിമിരന്ധസ്യ ജ്ഞാനാഞ്ജനശലാകായ ചക്ഷുരോന്മിളിതം തസ്മൈ ശ്രീഗുരവേ നമ നമാ ഓം വിഷ്ണുപാദായ കൃഷ്ണപൃഷ്ഠായ ഭൂതലെ ശ്രീമതെ ഭക്തിവേദാന്ത സ്വാമി ഇതി നാമിനെ നമസ്തെ സാരസ്വതി ദേവേ ഗൗരവാണി പ്രചാരിണേ നിർവിശേഷ ശൂന്യവാദീ പാശ്ചാത്യദേശതാരിണേ വാഞ്ചാകൽപ്പതരൂഭ്യശ്ച കൃപാ സിന്ധൂഭ്യ പതീതാം പാവനേഭ്യോ വൈഷ്ണവേഭ്യോ നമോ നമ ജയ ശ്രീകൃഷ്ണ ചൈതന്യ പ്രഭൂ നിത്യാനന്ദ ശ്രീ അദ്വൈത ഗദാധാര ശ്രീവാസാദി ഗൗരഭക്തവൃന്ദ ഹരേ കൃഷ്ണ ഹരേ കൃഷ്ണ 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 ഹരേ 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 രാമ ഹരേ രാമ 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 ഹരേ ഹരേ Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I'm grateful to be here amongst all of you today. And I'll be speaking on the topic of service attitude. The Bhagavad Gita describes in its sixth chapter that Jnana Vikyana Trupta Atma. It describes that it is only through knowledge that and realization that one becomes satisfied this is the sixth chapter eighth verse of the bhagavad gita so it's been displayed over there the powerpoint service attitude transforms knowledge into realization all of us are searching for happiness and when we search for happiness essentially what are we looking for we are actually looking for a fulfilling object to love and to serve we may want wealth we may want good looks we may want prestige we may want possessions we may want positions but all of these through all of these what we want is that someone should love us so we want to love love and be loved and when we if we look back at our lives the times when we feel the most contented is not just when we achieve something it is rather when that achievement leads to a deeper connection with others maybe a loved one appreciates us for students if they get good marks in their exams that's wonderful but if their parents or mentors appreciate them after that that brings a greater sense of fulfillment for top athletes who have their own coaches they win the tournaments that's wonderful but when they can please uh, when their coaches are pleased they say i'm proud of you that is when they feel deeply contented so we are all looking for a fulfilling object of love and love is expressed through service when we love someone we want to please them and pleasing them means doing some service for them so essentially the search for happiness is a search for a satisfying object to love and serve <coughs> unfortunately if we do not find a proper object to love and serve then the service attitude becomes misdirected so some people is hey, i'm not going to serve anyone but such people who say they don't serve anyone for they actually serve their mind and senses in fact um, people who defy god say i don't believe in god i don't care for god if we don't serve the almighty our mind and senses become al- almighty they start pulling us here there and everywhere and i'll talk about the role of the almighty here but the point i'm making here is that we live today in an age of everybody seeking freedom there is no 
value that captivates the human mind in today's times as much as does the idea of freedom. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be free. Any particular thing which you want to take, if we add freedom to it, people people start accepting that. So, um, in the 1920s, when the cigarette companies were advertising smoking, at that time, they found that their sales had reached a plateau. Because all the men who had enough money to smoke, to buy cigarettes and smoke, they had, they were more or less already smoking. So then one of them got a brain view. He said, actually, 50% of our market is untapped. How? How is 50% untapped? Yeah, women don't smoke. And then they got a specially designed cigar for females. And then in 1929, this is what happened in America, in the Independence Day Parade March on the Broadway in America, they got some of the most popular female icons of America at the most visible locations where all cameras were there to flip out the cigarette and smoke it. And when they got them to smoke it, it created a sensation and they were told, they were all paid of course, and they are paid and asked, what are you doing? It says, we are lighting the torches of freedom. We are lighting the torches of freedom. And what happened? How does lighting a cigar lead to freedom? Actually, the result of that at that time was suppressed about how harmful smoking can be. Smoking in general is harmful. Smoking for women is especially harmful. Smoking for women, especially when they're pregnant, is even more harmful. But by the time all these findings came about, it led to so many people being hooked to smoking and unable to give it up. As a British thinker, Oscar Wilde, he said that, Giving up smoking is the easiest thing in the world. I have done it over a hundred times. <laughs> that means I gave up smoking, but smoking didn't give me up. Why are we talking about smoking over here? The point is that if we do not have a satisfying object to serve, we will create some object and start serving that. Basically, the irony of our times is that we have more physical freedom than ever before but then we have more psychological bondage than ever before psychological bondage means that people are bound by their desires when somebody is having an addiction what does it mean it's a bondage the person may go from one country to another country and you say i'm free but they may go from one country to another country but in that country as soon as they board as soon as they disembark the first if somebody is hooked to smoking somebody is hooked to drinking somebody is hooked to drugs first thing they will as soon as get there okay where can i indulge so they're physically free but they're mentally bound and this mental bondage can actually be more damaging than physical bondage because it's not visible that we are bound and we are dragged here and there. Now, of course, addiction can have many different specific causes. But overall, actually, addiction is a result of a lack of connection. The psychologists have observed and studied addiction. They say that the cure for addiction is not sobriety. It is connection. By addiction means we have become slaves of a particular habit. We're just not able to break free. So today's ethos says, why should I serve anyone? Why should I have a service attitude? I want to be free and do what I want to do. But actually, when we try to be free and do whatever we want to do, we end up losing our freedom. We become attached, we become addicted. And once we are addicted, we are lost. So the <coughs> researchers did some experiments on drugs. Drug addiction is a huge problem in the Western world, increasingly in India also from where I have come. But 
generally it is thought that if you take drug once you take drugs twice you take drugs three times four times then you the drug is an addictive substance and you'll get addicted to it but actually if we consider uh, when we take morphine or when we take pain medication if we do a surgery at that time the pain killers that we take they contain a lot of drugs and often they contain such a large quantity of drugs but we don't get addicted at that time most people they do a surgery uh, at that time they take some pain medication but they go into the hospital a sober person they come out addicted to drugs it doesn't happen like that so it's not just the consumption of the drugs that causes the addiction it is the psychology of the person if the person is connected with others the person is lonely and isolated then they succumb to such addictions so there was an experiment done by psychologists wherein they had well known experiment was that if you put a mouse mouse are favorite mice are favorite objects of experiment for most many scientists we put a mice in a in a cage with a pot of water which is spiked with drugs although that drug doesn't taste all that great although the drug is um, how is, is the child, the mouse can do other things the mouse keeps drinking the water and gets drugged now that's how if we indulge in it we get we get addicted to it but then the such another experiment where they put not one mice in a mouse cage but in a large mouse cage and they put many mice over there and even when so in the previous experiment they had this uh, good water and drugged water and the mice would keep, keep mice would keep getting drug water and get addicted to it but in this case when they kept good water and drug water and they kept a whole community of mice over there practically no mice started to drink the drug water they drank the not normal water and went on with their lives so the point here is that we need connection and connection happens only when we have a service attitude we cannot connect sustainably with others if we do not have a service attitude if our connection is based on the idea that you do whatever i tell you to do mm-hmm. some people have this idea my way or the highway <laughs> you do what i say i say some people say you are absolutely free to speak your mind as long as you agree with me <laughs> what is the freedom there so the whole idea is that whenever we have any relationship with anyone at that time that person may sometimes often times in fact not act the way we want them to act and that is when for the relationship to be sustained a service attitude will be required if the other person is simply doing what we want them to do then we don't need any service attitude because they are, we are like the masters but in every relationship people sometimes act the way we may want them to many times they do not act that way so if the relationship is not to be ruptured by that then we need service attitude i spoke in i was just in san francisco and there i spoke to a yoga community on the topic of loneliness so one point about this is that service supplies structure to our life the lesser the structure in our life the greater the rupture the mind causes in our life that means if somebody has no relationships no commitments no connections then they may sit down on their computer and start surfing okay they look at one video then read one website and they look at this picture and that and that and sometimes people spend hours and hours and hours there's one boy in thailand who kept surfing on the net for 72 hours continuously and not only that he forgot to eat he forgot to drink also and finally he got a stroke and he fainted and then his neighbor came and what happened to you and fortunately he was taken to a hospital and he was survived but when there is no structure in our life then what happens there is no commitment there is no obligations then our mind can take us on a ride anywhere and everywhere so basically this is what is happening when i look at this side i look at that side i look at that side i look at that i look at that hours and hours and hours can go like that 
so all this is essentially we when we do not have a service attitude where we serve others then we end up serving our mind the mind says look at this look at that look at that look at that and today with technology providing us almost unlimited distractions we can get endlessly trapped by it a social critic has said that today's youth especially their condition is that they are distracted from distraction by distraction they are distracted from distraction by distraction so now this is generally a service attitude which we all need to have to the extent we have service attitude to the extent we come out of ourselves otherwise the self can become like a black hole in which we sink and we get self obsessed and we lose we lose track of everything else now some people uh, study medical science and there's a branch of medical science called as uh this ophthalmology where people become eye specialists actually today's culture makes everyone an eye specialist not an eye specialist but an eye specialist <laughs> eye specialist <laughs> so people have people are narcissistic self obsessed and we need to come out of ourselves so service attitude is what brings us out of ourselves now this is generally about service attitude but broadly speaking uh, why do we need to serve krishna krishna is the supreme lord me say i have to serve my boss i have to serve my family members to serve those people with whom i am working with living with but why do we serve krishna many reasons <coughs> kulashekar maharaj in a verse in the mukundamala sutra explains this that he says he compares a material master and the supreme spiritual master that is krishna so now when we serve krishna he is all pure pavitranam pavitram yo mangalanam cha mangalam he is supremely pure and because he is supremely pure when we serve him we become purified we all have lower desires we may have too much anger too much greed too much negativity all this impurities that are there they decrease when we serve krishna not only is he all pure he is also all attractive when we serve krishna then that service to him gives us a higher satisfaction sukhataram aparam na jatu jane hari charan smarana amrute na tulyam So Kulu Shri Ramana says that I don't know any happiness that is as great as the happiness of remembering Krishna of absorption in Krishna. So when we serve Krishna at that time our consciousness becomes attached to Krishna. And by that attachment to Krishna we get supreme satisfaction. All of us when we look for pleasure we look for pleasure in the world and the world offers us at best drops of pleasure. but krishna is like a ocean of pleasure we can dive in him and delight in him eternally and krishna is all loving he fulfills our longing for love perfectly krishna is always there in our hearts for us uh, even if we neglect him even if we reject him he doesn't go away he stays with us always waiting for us to turn towards him and our very deep longing for love that is there that is fulfilled when it is directed towards krishna in the shrimad bhagavatam in the fourth canto is the leela of dhruva maharaj when dhruva was insulted by his stepmother and neglected by his father at that time he ran to his mother and his mother was helpless she says i can't help you i need help says, then go to vishnu she told him that vishnu can offer you more love than what millions of mothers like me can offer it's a very profound statement that means that his mother is not saying i don't love you her love for her child is real but her love is like a drop millions of drops they come together they make an ocean so we can think in our life who is the person who loves us the most maybe in the present maybe in the past somebody has loved us 
who whoever person from whom we have experienced the greatest love whatever love we have experienced from them millions of times more love we can experience from krishna then why don't we experience that love right now because we are disconnected from him krishna is like the sun he gives light to everyone but if our eyes are closed then we can't see the sun we can't bask in the presence of the sun so like that krishna is here we are here but our face is turned away from krishna bahir mukh jeev because we are turned away from krishna so we can't perceive krishna's love right now the process of bhakti yoga which is centered on seva bhav service attitude is the process by which we turn towards krishna atah shri krishna namaadi na bhavet grahyam indriyai sevon mukhe hi jivadau swayam eva spuratya daha in the puranas it is said that sevon mukhe by seva we who are vimukh from krishna will become unmukh and when we become unmukh when we turn towards krishna then what happens swayam eva spuratya daha krishna reveals himself krishna manifests himself and when he manifests then he because he's so loving our hearts longing for love is completely fulfilled and krishna is all secure is all safe he is all powerful when we when our heart becomes attracted to krishna then we become absorbed in him we become attached to him and he becomes a pacifying satisfying object of thought for us when we serve him and we think about him we all are always thinking about something or the other but most of the time our thinking works against us our thinking only makes us agitated more and more psychologists have found that many people have mental health problems but when do they have the maximum mental health problems when they are doing some work they are busy in their work but when people they relax so during our leisure time our mind works overtime our mind works overtime and it makes us agitated so when we become attached to krishna as soon as we have any leisure time our mind goes towards krishna when it goes towards the krishna the krishna krishna then bhaja hore mana shri nanda nandana abhay charan arvindare abhay when we fix the mind on krishna we become free from fear because we understand krishna is one unchanging reality generally it is change that causes fear if the economy suddenly goes down if the political the government suddenly changes if our relationship seems to be becoming unstable your health seems to be going on any change causes fear but when you understand krishna is unchanging krishna is always supreme and krishna is always present in my heart with me then we become peaceful so now the reasons we serve krishna because krishna is all attractive but when i said that krishna purifies us he transforms us so how does he do that when we serve krishna there are many different ways in which we can serve him and how do we decide which service to do for krishna so how is always a function of why how should i go somewhere say for example if you are to travel from here to vancouver now how should you go you go by your own car you take a flight you take a you take a cab you some people walk across the country also so should you go for a walk so how we will go will depend on why we want to go if we are going for a particular meeting which is very urgent we may go by the fastest way if you are going by sight for sight seeing we may decide okay i may take my car with me then i can travel around easily so how is always so how is always a function of why so similarly when we have to decide there are so many services to do to krishna how do i decide what service to do so for that we have to understand why am i doing the service and the services to krishna can be in many forms they are broadly classified by prahlad maharaj into nine categories 
ಶ್ರವಣಂ ಕೀರ್ತನ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಸ್ಮರಣ ಪಾದ ಸೇವನ ಅರ್ಚನ ವಂದನ ದಾಸ್ಯ ಸಾಖ್ಯಮಾತ್ಮ ನಿವೇದನ ಇತೀಪುಂ ಸಾರ್ಪಿತ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಭಕ್ತಿಶ್ಚೇನ ನವಲಕ್ಷಣ ಕ್ರಿಯೇತ ಭಗವತ್ಯದ್ಧ ತನ್ಮನ್ಯೇಧಿತಮುತ್ತಮ ಸೊ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಿಮೆಂಬರಿಂಗ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರೆಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ವೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸರ್ವ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ನಾವು ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಸರ್ವ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿ ಮೇ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ವಿ ಮೇ ಡೂ ಸಮ್ ಕುಕಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಮೇ ಡೂ ಸಮ್ ಬುಕ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇವನ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸರ್ವ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ವಿಚ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಆರ್ ಹೌ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲಿ ವಿ ಸರ್ವ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಟ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ವೈ ವೈ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಕಲ್ಟಿವೇಟ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡ್ ವಿ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡ್ ವಿ ಗ್ಲೋ ಕ್ಲೋಸರ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಫೀರಿಯಾರಿಟಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಫೋಕಸ್ ಆನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆನ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಓ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ದನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ದನ್ ಮೀ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ಇನ್ಫೀರಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ದೀಸ್ ಇಮೋಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ಸೋ ಗುಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ದನ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡಿಯರ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ದನ್ ಮೀ ಐ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಡೂ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಡೂ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಐ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಡೂ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಡಿಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಅವರ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಲುಕ್ ವಿದರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ದನ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲೆಸರ್ ದನ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ವಿಜನ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೋ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸರ್ವ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಸೊ ಅ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಕಲ್ಟಿವೇಟ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಸಚ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ದ ಚೈತನ್ ಚರ ತಾಮ್ರತ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರತಾಪ್ ರುದ್ರ he wanted to get the mercy of the lord who had descended as shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and he was trying again and again to meet lord chaitanya but lord chaitanya said that i am sanyasi why should i mix with materialistic people like a king i don't want to associate with him he was begging for an audience but he was just not getting it and then jagannath rath yatra was there lord jagannath came out in rath yatra and before the rath yatra started Maharaj Pratap Rudra was the king of the whole kingdom. He picked up a broom and started cleaning the path in front of Lord Jagannath. And in this way, through his, not just through his external action, which was done for show, but through his inner disposition, he demonstrated that I, although I may be king of the world in front of the Lord, I am the servant. So by that menial act of service, he demonstrated that he didn't care oh, oh that i am how can a king clean indian society at that time was quite the caste system which is originally by quality had by that time become stratified and it was by birth and some people because of some misconceptions would think that certain certain work is low class so the work of cleaning the streets was considered low class work by some people and for a king to do that would be shocking how can a king demean himself like that but pratap rudra showed by his example that he didn't his consciousness is not at the material level trying to prove oh i am your king all of you need to respect me i am superior to you he was not his reference was not the world his reference
and then Lord Chaitanya profusely blessed him with his mercy. Now we also serve not just for cultivating humility. We all have been given certain abilities and we want to use those abilities in the service of Krishna. What we are is Krishna's gift to us and what we become is our gift to Krishna. So whatever ability we have, when we use it, we develop that ability. So if we can sing, we can speak, we can decorate, we can cook, we can play musical instruments, we can manage and coordinate, whatever it is that we can do, we use it in a mood of service to Krishna. And by that we do a constructive service, we also develop our ability. For longevity in our service, if we find out something which we like to do, something which we are good at, then we'll be able to do it naturally. We'll be able to do it joyfully. But then we also want to serve society. We want to, we want to benefit others. There are different ways of benefiting people. If you give a hungry person food, that's, that's serving them. If you give them prasad, we are serving not just their body, we are serving their soul. If you give them spiritual knowledge, we are connecting them with the Lord who can benefit them forever. So Srila Prabhupada could have served Krishna in India itself. He could have chanted Hare Krishna and written books in India. But he wanted to reach out to more and more people. So at the age of 70, all alone, he came to the Western world just so that he could serve people more and more, help people to come closer and closer to Krishna. So when we say go out and distribute books, when we invite people for spiritual programs, when we help in organizing programs, we are serving society. We are actually helping them benefit. And from our perspective, the most important benefit of serving is that our desire to serve increases. That the result of service is the desire, greater desire for service. Ab Achittam samadha tum nashakno si maistiram abhyas yogi natato maam icha tum dan anjaya. And says abhyas yoga. By practice of bhakti yoga, what will happen? Maam icha tum. My desire, the desire to serve will increase. The desire to serve will increase. Strengthen the desire to serve. Now, how does this happen? This is that I would talk. The title was that service attitude transforms knowledge into realization. So basically, when we practice, when we hear spiritual knowledge, at that time through the the knowledge enters through the ears. But when we contemplate it, we analyze it, then it enters into the head. Otherwise, it enters into the ears. For some people, it's like the there is just a straight path from one ear to the other ear. <laughs> It comes in through the ear, goes out through the other ear. It doesn't go in at all. So, but when we contemplate on it, then that contemplation can also be done, can also be done in the mood of service to Krishna. This is Krishna's message. Whatever intelligence I have, let me use this intelligence to serve Krishna by trying to understand his message. In fact, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita in the 18.70 says that Adhishyate Chaya Imam Dharmyam Samvad Mavayo Jnana Yajjena Tenaham Ishtasyam Iti Memati This is those who study the sacred conversation of ours. They are worshipping me with their intelligence. Like we do Aarti of the Lord, we take a Diya and do the Aarti. But Krishna is saying, when we study the Bhagavad Gita, our intelligence is becoming like our lamp. And with the intelligence, we are worshipping Krishna, we are in the Aarti of Krishna. So we study Krishna, also study Krishna's message, also with a mood of service to Krishna. And that way, the knowledge enters into our head. And then we apply that knowledge, we do practical service to Krishna. Then that knowledge enters into our heart. And when it enters into our heart, that is when it transforms into realization. That is when it gives us the supreme satisfaction. That is when we start getting energy spiritually. Spiritual energy, what, how does it mean? When we feel tired, we take food. And by that food, we get energy. 
However, sometimes if there is some problem with our digestion, we may eat, but all that we eat, it just just consumed by some germs in the body. And people eat a lot, but still they feel weak. So our energy depends not on how much we eat, but on how much we digest. Similarly, our spiritual energy depends on not on how much we know, but on how much we apply. How much are we trying to live what we have learned? And that living means doing practical service to Krishna. So through this service to Krishna, actually uh, we grow in spiritual energy. And what, does we, what do we mean by spiritual energy? Actually, all of us will face difficulties, problems, reversals in life. When we face reversals, at that time, say if we are, good, if we are driving a cycle, pedal, pedaling a cycle, and uh, as we are pedaling, pedaling, say there's a, a tree that has there's been a storm and a tree has fallen along the way and then what happens we're driving we come and we break if we don't break our car cycle will hit the tree it'll fall down on the other hand if you're driving a huge truck and a truck has been driving for moving, moving fast for a long time then if there's a, is a fallen tree along the way and the truck hits what will happen the truck, the tree will be pushed aside and the truck will move on. So for all of us in our life, when problems come, they are like the tree that falls in the path of our life. If our energy level is low, we will stop and just quit. I can't do it. But if our spiritual energy is strong, if we, have a, if we have heard about Krishna, we have understood it, we have served Krishna, then we will understand that yes, problems will come in my life, but Krishna is always with me. And then we will be able to move forwards in spite of whatever problems we may have had. We see this, this principle of service attitude most dramatically <coughs> in the life of Narad Muni. Narad Muni is a great sage who is a teacher of great saintly people like Prahlad and uh, <coughs> Dhruva and others. This Narad Muni in his previous life was a maid servant son. He was, a, he was an ordinary boy and who was his father was also not known. And he did not, he just had some cultural understanding that we should serve saintly people. So when some saintly people came uh, near where his mother was staying, he started serving them with his mother and just by that service gradually he started developing taste he would serve them and then they would speak about krishna he would hear about them he served them he heard about krishna and he became spiritually enlivened he started getting so much taste in hearing about krishna and speaking about krishna and that's what he started living for and then he was just a just a four or five year old boy. The Bhagavatam seems to have many characters who are about five years old. Who are the other prominent characters in the Bhagavatam who are five years old? Who? Dhruva Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj. And there are many people who are small characters, relatively small. So Narada was a small boy. And he had he had no father. His and then his mother was bitten by a snake and she died. This is just a catastrophe for a child to lose the only person who is there for them. It's, it's extremely difficult. <clears throat> I was at a mental health care center where there were mental health care providers who cared for children who were from orphaned or divorced families and these care providers they, they would tell so many sob stories so many tragic heartbreaking stories of how the kids were suffering because there's no one to love them no one to care for them it is not just providing food clothing shelter it is they need somebody to love them when they don't have that they just they become they don't grow up they, they don't grow up psychologically they grow up stunted, they grow up distorted. So for Narada, uh, at least we could say, 
today in the western world at least if the parents pass away there's the child protection service which will take care of the child physically maybe place them in a foster home narada was living in a small village his mother was not a part of any community major community he passed away and he was completely alone and yet he was not alone because he had served the great devotees because he had heard about from krishna from them he understood that i am i may be alone but i am not lonely alone is a physical condition lonely is a mental condition we may be alone physically but if we are busy in doing something if we are absorbed in something feels purposeful we don't feel loneliness lonely is a psychological condition where we want some connection but there is no connection available now for narada the only connection he had was taken away from him just a five year old boy but because he had heard about krishna because he had served krishna the result was at that time he immediately understood this is a time for me to devote myself to krishna from the external perspective the big tree had fallen the path of narada's life and he is a small boy people would thought what can this boy do now he like a tiny cycle a stop but because he had been de- he had devoted himself to krishna although he seemed externally small internally he had great energy he was like a truck although that big obstacle of becoming an orphan came to him he did not feel like an orphan materially we might be anath but spiritually we are always sanath anath means having no protector but sanath means having a protector kada hamai kante nitya kinkara praharshi praharshishami sanath jeevitam shri yamuna acharya in stotra ratna composes a beautiful prayer and he says भवतमेवाचरन निरंतर प्रशात निशेष मनोरथातर हि सेज मै डि लॉर्ड मै मैंड हेज बीन वैंड्रिंग हियर देर एंड एवरीवेर लुकिंग फॉर सम प्लेजर फॉर सम शेल्टर बट आई हेव नेवर गॉट इट नाउ एट लास्ट आफ्टर लाइफ टाइम्स ऑफ सर्चिंग आई हेव गॉट यू ओ लॉर्ड भवतमेवाचर निरंतर निरंतर आई कंटिन्यूअसली अब्सॉर्व मै सेल्फ इन यू लॉर्ड एंड वॉट विल हैप वॉट हैपन दैट बाय दैट प्रशांत निशेष द माइंड विच इज विच इज ऑलवेज फिल्ड विथ डिजायर एंड फियर इट कम्स डाउन एंड ना वॉट डू आई वॉन्ट टू डू कदा हई कांति कनित the king kara now i understand i am your eternal servant and what do i want to do as your eternal servant praharshishami sanath jeevitam that you are my nath and eternally i am going to live with you as my master my protector my lord i feel relieved i feel comforted i feel protected because you are there with me o oh lord sanath jeevitam so when we do service to krishna we get the spiritual energy to overcome obstacles in our life and keep moving forwards because we understand krishna is with us and that connection with krishna gives us energy even materially we don't seem to have much energy the question may come how much should we serve how many people say that oh i already have so many things to do in my life you say i have this responsibility that thing to do that thing to do that thing i don't have time to do service yes all of us are busy no doubt about it but if you understand that it is important to serve krishna then we'll make time for it and when we are serving krishna so seriousness is seen by our willingness to put our mind aside mm. <clears throat> why should uh, for ex- what do i mean by put our mind aside suppose say we are working in office working for a boss and how often do we tell the boss you know the boss tells us you have to do this project i don't feel like doing it so i won't do it i don't feel like doing it how often will we say that to the boss practically never isn't it so we are if we are serious about our work then we seriousness means we put our mind aside my mind feels like it we can't neglect it completely 
but we can't let ourselves get carried away by the mind similarly if you are serious of our our bhakti then we should learn to put our mind aside whether i feel like it or i don't feel like it i will do it because i want to serve krishna i am serious about my relationship with krishna those who say that when i feel like doing something i will do it then they are actually not serious about their relationship it's like which other relationship we do like that you know, if a mother says whenever a baby starts crying the mother has to attend to the baby the mother says no i don't feel love for the baby so i won't take care of it how will that work you know we cannot any serious responsibility we don't leave it to our feelings so if we are ready to put our feelings aside for serving our boss serving our family members then similarly we should be ready to put our feelings aside for serving krishna why should krishna get less from us than what our boss gets so krishna is our ultimate lord and he can give us something far greater than what any boss can give us the boss can give us some money which can help us for some time but krishna can give us eternal life and eternal joy so therefore we should serve as much as we can generally to to serve means to sacrifice and to sacrifice means to stretch ourselves stretch ourselves means if say if somebody wants to do weight training and they can lift 10 kg weight then if they go to the gym and every day they lift 1 kg weight uh, they will not do any weight training he said it if they can lift 10 kg they need to be they need to be at least 10 kg maybe 10.5 kg maybe 11 kg and that's how their muscles will grow similarly for us actually we need to stretch ourselves a little bit that's how we grow towards krishna by the stretching our devotion increases and now as there are many services which service will give us which service should we do we ultimately by doing service we want to get the krupa the mercy of krishna and mercy depends on the necessity where wherever there is a greatest necessity there is a greatest need shri bhakta sadan sri thakur would say that is where the greatest mercy is available that means say if somebody asks us for a glass of water and we give it yeah that's service attitude and it's good but if somebody is a soldier fighting on a war field and the enemy is attacking the soldier is busy fighting fighting the soldier is parched dying of thirst practically and that time the soldier was give me water someone and somebody goes there to the war field and gives a glass of water the the action is the same but the situation is dramatically different and that same action in that situation has enormous value that is very simple giving water but where there is a great need for water giving water where there is brings enormous mercy so if we are living in a community whatever services are needed the most if we do those services then we will get great mercy of krishna because krishna will see that we are taking responsibility we are wanting to help and we are helping in a way that counts so generally speaking there are some just like in material life some activities get glamorized say for example everybody wants their children to become mm, uh, engineers or doctors these become glamorized professions and everybody wants to get those and other arts and other fields people don't want to go there much now now it's good to go into engineering and medicine also but we have to see whether that is our nature that is our that is where we can best contribute so just as some professions can get glamorized in spiritual life in in our material life similarly certain services get glamorized in in the devotional community also say for example services like where we are visible to everyone mm-hmm. so i was at a community and the what is one of the temple leaders was telling me that actually you know we have to do deity worship on festival days everybody wants to do deity worship <laughs> on normal day nobody wants to do deity worship now krishna is the same 
why people want to come on festival day and he says that we have so this devotee is telling me on janmashtami when the aarti we have to do he is this head pujari was telling me actually i have a headache everybody is i want to do that aarti i want to do that aarti why because everybody will see me doing the aarti so now actually when we do service more important than whether the world sees us doing the service is whether krishna sees us doing the service because our we may get some appreciation or admiration from the world but we will get advancement from krishna only so more important than the world seeing us doing service is krishna seeing us doing service so some services may get glamorized in the devotee community and everybody may want to do those services it's good if we get those opportunities but we shouldn't think that we make more advancement by doing those glamorized services actually when i started giving classes my spiritual master told me that you should remember that speaking is also a service to krishna he said it may well happen that if you are speaking and the audience is hearing it can happen that the audience makes more advancement by hearing about krishna than you make by speaking about krishna why because if somebody is speaking and they think i am so clever just see how many how impressing everyone then i'm not conscious of krishna but the audience is thinking that oh i'm learning about krishna no this is the lord i want to love so from the external perspective the uh, somebody sitting on a high asan and speaking that seems much more glamorous than just being one among 500 200 people sitting in the audience and hearing but if our purpose is to go closer to krishna the which service we are doing doesn't matter as much as the attitude with which we are doing the service so certain services may be glamorized but the services that are needed the most in one sense all services can give us the opportunity to advance but the services that are needed the most krishna becomes most pleased when we do those services and we make advancement by that and this is where we take responsibility for krishna responsibility is what actually brings us to maturity it reflects our maturity responsibility means i have taken this up and i will do it so when we take up responsibility for krishna we endear ourselves to krishna because responsibility hey, if if they okay if i feel like doing it i will do it sometimes people say that okay i'll come to the temple and i'll do this service at this time i'll come and i'll come to temple and serve prasad and then say then you everybody is there waiting for prasad and there is nobody to serve what happened i didn't feel like coming to the temple so i didn't come now that means what is happening we are not fixing the mind on krishna we fix the mind on krishna we take up responsibility whether i feel like it or don't feel like it i'll do it and responsibility can help us advance dramatically because that indicates again as i said our seriousness to serve krishna Shri Prabhupada gave a very simple definition of what is Krishna consciousness. He said, if we come in front of the deities and we feel that Krishna is asking us, "What are you doing for me? What are you doing for me?" If we feel like that, Krishna is asking me, then we are Krishna conscious. Most people come to the temple and ask Krishna, "What are you doing for me?" <laughs> i have this problem i have this issue i have i made this thing that thing is not working what are you doing for me so the service attitude inverts the relationship instead of we asking from krishna what are you doing for me we feel that krishna is asking us what are you doing for me and regarding uh, uh, last point i'll conclude with now that actually when we have developed service attitude we will get absorption in krishna and what is the result of absorption the less time we have for our problems the less problems we have this is what do you mean i have problems the problems are always there but actually speaking you see there's a there's a fundamental difference between problems which trouble us at a as a mental level and physical issues say for example if we have to push a troll heavy trolley then we have to apply physical energy and the more energy we apply the farther the trolley will go there is a linear con- linear proportion between how much energy we apply and how much work gets done but with respect to mental problems it's not like that 
If we start thinking about a problem, if we act impulsively, it's a problem. But if you think about a problem, then the, the more we think, the clearer things become. So there's a initially a linear proportion. But after some time, it becomes we hit a plateau. We keep thinking more, but nothing seems to be... Why did this person do like this? Why did this happen? We keep thinking, thinking, thinking. Our mind goes into auto-repeat mode. It like sometimes, if you are watching some video on YouTube, it just is auto-replay. So after it's complete, it keeps replaying. So mind keeps replaying, going round and round and round. If there's a fan and the fan moves round and round and round, uh, the, actually if the fan were the wheel of a car, the car would move a long distance. The fan moves round and round and round but gets nowhere. Similarly, our mind also keeps moving round and round and round. We keep thinking, 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 it moves no, nowhere. At least with respect to the fan, when it moves round and round and round, it cools the atmosphere. But when the mind moves round and round and round, it heats us up. We just get agitated. So after some time, the more we think about it, actually the less we are able to deal with the problem. Because we feel frustrated, we feel exhausted, we feel irritated. That's why, in that sense, the more time we give to our problems, the problems will become worse. And the less time we have for our problems, less time doesn't mean we neglect the problems. But we give them due time and then we move on into other things. The less time we have for our problems, the less problems we'll have. Life determines our problems, we determine the size of those problems. Krishna says, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all obstacles by my grace. Krishna will help us. We may all have many problems. And sometimes bhakti might seem like another problem. One more thing I have to take up. But when we take shelter of Krishna, Krishna strengthens us from within. When he strengthens us from within, our capacity not only to deal with the particular problems we are facing, but a capacity to deal with whatever life sends our way, that increases. So service to Krishna will not drain us. Rather, service to Krishna will strengthen us internally. And by that strength, we'll be able to overcome whatever difficulties we have. The more we become absorbed in Krishna, the more we'll be satisfied. The more we're able to contribute, doing constructive things in our life. And thus, service attitude will help us to gain satisfaction internally and to make contributions externally. I'll summarize what I spoke today. I spoke on the topic of service attitude transforms knowledge into realization. We are all looking for happiness and our search for happiness is essentially a search for a satisfying object to love and serve. We may want wealth, power, positions, positions, all this to get somebody to love us. But unfortunately, when we neglect the principle of service, because our age says, I want to be free, then we end up serving our mind and senses. Talk about how people are more physically free than in the past. There's no slavery largely in today's world. But people are psychologically bound by addiction. And addiction is where the cause, the primary cause of addiction is not just indulgence in a particular thing. It is isolation from others. Talk about the experiment with mice. So when we are disconnected from others, alienated from others, then whatever thing promises pleasure, we get hooked to that. The cure, the opposite of addiction is not just sobriety or self-control. It is connection. And to connect with others sustainably, we need service attitude. If you just have an enjoying attitude, then when the other person stops giving enjoyment, we give up the connection. But service attitude helps us to steadily connect with others. And then we connect with others in our family, our profession. Why should we connect with Krishna? Because he's all pure and will purify us. He's all attractive and he'll give us higher satisfaction. He's all powerful. He'll give us inner peace. And he's all loving. He'll fill our heart with love. And when we serve Krishna, by serving him, what happens? First of all, we develop humility. That is the primary purpose. Pradap Rudra got mercy of the Lord because he served humbly. Humility doesn't mean that we feel inferior to others. Rather, humility means we focus not on our relative superiority and inferiority to others, but we focus on Krishna. 
and we also develop whatever abilities we have when we serve krishna we also please the devotees and we deepen our connection with krishna and most importantly by serving our desire to serve krishna increases more and more and when we serve krishna there are many different services we can do and all of them can help us to advance but the service that is most needed if we do that service that there will get the greatest mercy well sometimes some services are glamorized if we do those get to do those that's that's good it's a blessing but we won't make advancement based on how many people are seeing us do the service make advancement by how krishna sees us doing our service what attitude that we are doing the service when we are doing service how much to serve we need to stretch ourselves why should krishna get less than what our boss gets from us and when we serve krishna in this way we'll find that yeah, actually our mind which gets agitated with so many problems serving krishna will give us spiritual energy our problems will be like a tree falling in our way without service to krishna our energy is low so we are like a small cycle but when we are serving krishna the knowledge enters from our ears to the head to the heart we gets the conviction that krishna is with me and then we become like a truck we can push the problems aside and move on the less time we have our prob- for our problems the less problems we have so when we take a responsibility for krishna we feel krishna is asking me what are you doing for me then we connect with krishna in a serious and sustained way the le- uh, the less time we have for our problems the problems don't trouble us so much and thus we move forward both in gaining inner satisfaction and outer contribution thank you very much hare krishna hare krishna